This is the first time I've used this product, Con Condersal Z1100. It's an anti-scale compound which stops uh, decarb in electric kilns. So uh, you're just supposed to dip the blades in, thoroughly degrease them, dip the blades in and it forms a very thin coating to stop any uh, of the kiln atmosphere uh, contacting and attacking the steel whilst the blades are ostenitizing. Um, I've got some blades already in in the kiln. But, uh, that's the product on the blade, very very thin coating and it's it sort of dries, it's dried. Uh, yeah let's give it a try see how it works. Oh, here's my kiln. I've done lots of uh, videos on heat treating over the years. Um, this is an even heat kiln. I think it's the KO18 model. It's capable of about 1300 centigrade. But for 01 you don't need to go no higher than 800. Uh, that's the, uh, the blaze loaded in. I've got a little block of uh, steel that I use for preheating the quench tank down there. The ramp master controller is already programmed <coughs> so all I've got to do is recall the program which is number two run the program and the, the kiln does its thing it will uh, do all the ramp and holes to the temperature that I want for my own heat treat recipe I like to hold the steel at austenitizing temperature for about 25-30 minutes before I quench. With those long old times you can get decarburisation, that's the reason why you've got to have the anti-scale compound. Well they've been soaking now at good temperature, 797-798 for 37 minutes, sorry for 23 minutes, 7 more minutes to go. Um, but I'm going to get the block of steel out of there because I want to pre-warm the oil. When you put a big mass of oil, uh, steel into the oil like that, you really you want to keep it totally submerged all the time. Because if you bring it out the oil too soon, you'll um, you could cause uh, a fire, an explosive fire at that. Because um, there's a thing called a fire triangle: heat, fuel, and oxygen. It's cooled down enough now, but if I bring it out even now. You can see immediately we've got vapour, but we haven't sufficient heat to ignite that vapour. If I brought it out earlier, we would have ignited the vapour and had a flash. So anyway, this is just raising the uh, temperature to oil. I use a special quenching called Quench 32. Uh, it's formulated for O1 to drop O1 tool steel at the correct rate, not too fast and not too slow. Right, they've been in there long enough.
this is the last one coming out now so after this one's been quenched once this one's been quenched I shall take them in to the kitchen and degrease them by uh, washing them in hot water and uh, washing up the liquid that's the best way to degrease I found and clean them up on the uh, flat wheel on the um, large diameter contact wheel measure hard well, measure uh, as quenched hardness then clamp them together and temper them well this is how the blades have come out from the quench don't know if that's a bit too bright you can see where the compound was put on on the blade there does seem to be some decarb there still but hopefully it's been minimised let's see how they clean up ok uh, just get some brightness on the subject again there um, you can see some decarb the blades are cleaning up it has protected the blade to some extent but it's taking me twice as long to clean the blades up after the quench than what it did with ATP641 so that new stuff I wouldn't say is as good as ATP641 I'm going to go back to the old stuff I think I had to get the new stuff because the old my stockist didn't have ATP641 in stock at the time I ran out of it hence I thought I'd try the new stuff but no I'm going to go back to the old stuff quick Rockwell hardness test let's see what we got looking for 65 or above oh yeah we're well above it 66 almost that'll do well I'm a little bit uh, disappointed with the Condurus Condusol Z1100 uh, stuff it has taken me twice as long to clean the blades up there's still some decarb apparent in that but I'll get that with the next uh, clean-up operation after I've um, after I've uh, done the first temper cycle. I, I clamp them together now. I always do this. It's uh, this this just keeps things straight, and uh, don't, they're always going to get warps, however minor, when you heat treat uh, and. I've got videos on this, if you want to check the channel out you'll find them. By clamping your blades you'll eliminate the warps to a large extent. That's it. all clamped up nice now I have the, any minor warps I measured them on the flat table any minor warps if you if you if you get one warp in that way like that imagine my finger being a blade and one warp in that way you clamp from apex to apex uh, that, that seems to get the, the warps out better uh, two temper cycles clamped up one temper cycle with them all unclamped so in total three temper cycles and they'll come out as flat as a pancake well it's evening time now just took the clamps off let's have a look at the uh, blades after they've been tempered this is uh, two temper cycles nice colours The bit of moisture that's on them is uh, because I left them outside and it started to rain. I'm happy with those. Nice golden tempers. 
Can you see the mottling? The mottling in the blade surface. It's only on the very surface, but that is some decarb that's uh, that's happened. Uh, as I say, that that anti-scale compound that I applied wasn't as good as the old ATP641 powder. Well, this one of the blades. Uh, I've um, it's it's got the heat treat. Uh, colours on it, you can see the temper colour on there uh, and I'm going to use a flat just to show you how flat the blades are, if you remember I clamped them to to get them to take a new set because after you've quenched you always get some warpage although it might be tiny it will be there uh, it happens all the time there's stresses hidden within the steel after you've quenched those stresses have got to go somewhere and they come out as a warp uh, you might have um, so when you grind the pre-grind that can put some heat and some stress into the blade drilling holes in the handle that can put stress and cause the the blade to warp slightly um, but clamping them it trains the, the, the steel if you like uh, to take on a new set and that happens after the over a couple of temper cycles so I'm gonna got a flat piece of corian here a piece of uh, 240 grit fresh abrasive which I'm going to wrap around the uh, piece of corian like that. The corian is very flat and then uh, just give it a few passes and you'll see it take the high spots off so if I clean that off now you'll see where the low spots and the high spots are So now it's just a matter, yeah you can see where the, the, the high and the low spots are in the blade. Um, so it's just a matter now, just keep on hand rubbing until that goes, but that's not going to take much to get rid of that. Just a few passes with a fresh grit and we'll be down to flatness. Stop there and just show you the progress. So we've got a little bit of uh, a low spot there, a little bit of a low spot there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, I can. But I'll keep going until the, the blade's flat. It might take a five, five minutes or so. Now I've been working on uh, a finer grit, this is 600, I've gone from 400 to 600 now and I'll just wrap it around this uh, this rod which has got a uh, rubber back in just like that and this is uh, as far as I'll take the blade before um, going on to the next stage which is grinding the bevel and then after I've ground the bevel then I'll finally go to the very final grit which would be 1200 and that will be uh, the hand rubbing done that's the blade um, finished prior to applying the bevel I'm glad to say I got rid of uh, all the decarb, there was a bit of decarb as I was using that new anti-scale compound it wasn't as because of my last stuff so uh, it did entail a bit more work but the blade has come up clean all that remains now is to um, test the RC values and see where we are this, having had, this blade having had its third temper cycle so it should be around about 59 we'll go and test it now here we are at my RC tester I keep the RC tester in the house because it keeps it at a, a good temperature, it keeps it stable and accurate. Just place the blade onto the, uh, the anvil and wind uh,
wind it up and apply a preload. It's got to go around to the little ones on the red dot. The little hands on the red dot, the big hand. I can then centralise it as on the C and the B. The outer scale is the C scale, which is what we're going to use. The inner scale is for B for softer metals. Uh, let's, uh, let's see where we're at. Rock while testing. Here we go. Just release the lever. It should stop over here somewhere. So just leave that for a few moments to settle and then we'll uh, unload the test load and where the needle rests, where it comes to rest, will be our final reading which will give us our Rockwell measurement. Here we go, let's have a look. So according to that we're just over 59. 